Example 171, use the following data to find r and r squared. It says the table below will help you considerably. What the table below is giving us, it might be hard to see here because it's a tiny table, but what it's giving us is the sum of x, the sum of y, the sum of the product of x and y, it's giving you the sum of x squared, and it's giving you the sum of y squared. In other words, it's giving us the values that we need in order to get the sum of square values. We'll then take those sum of square values and plug them in for r, and then we can simply square r to get r squared. Well, I've done this for you a bunch of times, and I don't think that uh, you really need my help to do that work any longer. Basically, it's just a formula, and if you have the summary values provided to you, you can just enter them in. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what those answers are. For the xy value, we get negative 8. For the xx value, we get positive 8, and for the yy value, we get 8.75. Okay, so now that we have that done for ourselves, the last thing we want to do then is enter those numbers into R. So, SSXY will be negative 8 divided by the square root of SSXX, which is 8, times SSYY, which is 8.75. Let's work that out in the calculator, see what it gives us. Negative eight, right? So that means a negative, by the way, linear relationship, if there's a strong number here, we'll say it's a negative linear relationship, right? So a negative eight divided by the square root of, and the square root here will be eight times 8.75. Close it up, hit enter, and we end up with a value that's negative 0.956, 956. And I would say that that is strong negative linear relationship. So this is strong because it's 0.9 or over 0.9, and it's negative, of course, because of the negative sign. So we're going to say this is a strong negative linear relationship. And what does that mean when it's a negative linear relationship? It means that as one variable increases, the other tends to decrease. All right, now how do we get r squared? Well, in order to figure out r squared, we can simply square the r value. So let's just do that and see what we get. So if I take that r value I just found in my calculator and I square it, so I'm just going to hit the square button, I'll get 0 0.914. So 0 0.914, and I got that just by squaring r. Of course, when you square a negative value, it becomes positive. So our solution for that is 0 0.914. What this is saying is that the introduction of the x variable will explain 91% of the variation you find in the y's here in the table. So basically that means it's a pretty strong model, right? It has strong negative correlation and lots and lots of the variation in the y values can be explained by simply looking at the variation in the x values. So that's quite good. Um, ultimately in the end, by the way, if they had given us r squared and asked us to find r, Keep in mind, when you take the square root of this, you will get 0.956, but you will not get the negative. So please remember that you would need to see this sum of squares xy value, see that it's negative to know that r would be negative if you were provided with just r squared. Or you could look at the slope. If the slope of the regression line is negative, then also the r here has to be negative. So if this is negative, then r is negative. If the slope is negative, then r is negative. r squared, of course, will always be positive. And that's it.